Hi, my name is Leonardo Murillo, and I build cool stuff in AWS using products in AWS Marketplace. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be talking about industry trends, challenges, and how you can solve them. Today, I want us to talk about the challenges in securing applications built on top of microservice architectures in the cloud. So the time of the monolith is gone, or at least it should be gone. And with that, uh, access control lists and all those different rules that allow or deny traffic based on request source and targets, you know, IP addresses and stuff like that, they should also be mostly gone. However, there's still many monoliths out there. And the problem is that the patterns to secure cloud native applications are also not quite yet matching true cloud native means to secure applications. And the problem is that those patterns that we learned from the monolith simply won't work anymore because the applications built today are built of many services and the services may be running in containers. They may be functions as a service uh, orchestrated by some managed or serverless offering. They may even live in different accounts. They uh, may even consume services across regions. So the landscape where applications are running today and how they're built has dramatically changed and it's way more complex. So what this means is that expecting to secure this highly dynamic environment with granular controls, specific controls, using the methods of the past will simply not work. And what this has led to is usually poor security implementations, where rule sets are created with wide ranging ranges, allowing full submits to talk to one another. And a primary focus then becomes security requests coming from the outside world in. But that pretty much treats all traffic within the environment as trustworthy. And this effectively creates a DMZ, you know, like a demilitarized zone of your full cloud environment. And as we've seen, there's a lot of attacks that are taking advantage of supply chain, build and release processes, stuff that's happening, not coming from the outside world directly. Of course, that doesn't, that's not security, it doesn't work. So um, there's folks that have really started to see the value behind the concepts like zero trust, for example. And, and zero trust means the traffic will never be trusted unless the request is specifically and clearly identified, not by the machine generating the request, not by the subnet where the machine lives, but by the port the process is using, which are all very generic and they may not even represent the real source of uh, the request. Zero trust actually focuses on allowing or denying traffic depending on specifically the application identifying itself. So this is awesome if you look at how environments where things rapidly change operate where where subnets and hyper engines and, and applications and versions are always changing, you know? And requests also may be rooted through many hopes that pops in the middle. You actually may not even be able to tell the actual source of a, a TCP request. So by being able to identify the level of trust that you're giving to your applications by having those applications identified themselves, then you can really start build this really secure granular set of controls. And then you don't care. It's, it's regardless of where those applications are actually running. But actually getting to apply these patterns is first of all, not effortless. And it requires that whatever you're using to secure your environment has the necessary underlying capabilities to do it. If the tool that you're using doesn't provide those capabilities, then you can only use IP addresses or ports to define your rules. Then the tool is not going to allow you to actually apply these zero trust concepts. And this is where technologies like application ID, app ID by uh, Palo Alto, NGFW, which means next generation firewall come in. And that's kind of like what I wanted to talk to you about today. With technologies like app ID, what's really cool is that you can actually use application specific attributes to identify the application generating the traffic. And then you can create rules that apply to that traffic, no matter where the application is running. And what's even more important perhaps is without changing the application code base. It could be running on a managed service, on a serverless piece of orchestrating infrastructure, on a different account, doesn't matter. Wherever the application is running, you're going to, have to be able to identify it and create rules that will allow you to define how you want to treat the traffic in that environment from that application. And this becomes super effective when you tie it together with services like ACM from AWS. ACM is AWS's certificate management service. And uh, what it does is it handles certificate generation. It, it can use a public certification authority or a private certification authority. But what it allows you to do is basically generate and manage the whole life cycle of certificates in a fully automated fashion. So with ACM, you can automate the generation, assignment, and eventually validation of certificates. And you can define what's going to be the source of tr trust for those certificates and what schema of data you want to embed in that certificate. 
And with that automation and the data and the certificate, you can actually ensure that all applications add, add, get automatically identified and therefore you can automatically secure them. And you can use the certificates that are automatically and guaranteed uh, deployed to every one of your application instances. You can use it to identify the application and then build rules that allow or deny traffic from it or to it. So the way that it works is whenever you spin up a new instance or a replica of your application, ACM will generate the certificate and attach that certificate. And then you can use a uh, pattern matching to create rules that match data in the certificate to determine how you're going to identify the application, right? And with that, you can then create rules in NGFW to allow or deny traffic. And this works even across AWS accounts, which is really cool. So if you wanted to give it a try, that I really encourage you to do, you can get Palo Alto NGFW of AWS Marketplace by keep clicking on the link that is in this article where you found this video. And you can use it for free for up to 30 days. And the cool thing about getting it from the Marketplace is that all the configuration that you have to do that ties your AWS account with Palo Alto and that creates the endpoints because that's basically how it integrates with your account, creates endpoints in your VPC, uh, that then you can configure to route traffic through route tables through it, right? It creates all those things automatically for you, including IIM resources, and it gives it all the necessary permissions to basically do its thing. Uh, in the article where you found this video, you can learn a little bit more about the specifics of how all this works. And be on the lookout because we're going to be releasing a hands-on lab where I teach you how to actually do this step-by-step -step accompanied by me. So I hope to see you all soon and thank you very much for watching. <laughs>